Howdy, Tubal Kane again. You know, one of the perennial problems of a lathe operator or machinist is to keep his tailstock centers in alignment. So today we're going to uh, show you a little bit different way than what I've shown you before on how to do that. And we're going to make a test bar similar to this. And this is a page out of the South Bend How to Run a Lathe book. And shown here is a bar between centers uh, with uh, enlarged parts here that could be put between centers and turned down and then miked on each end to compare the two and uh, adjustments made until the diameters of, of the two are the same. Now I don't know why they're showing calipers on there uh, instead of a micrometer because that's that's not the way we're going to do it at all. That just isn't accurate enough. This is the text from below the picture that I just showed you in, in the last scene. So if you want to read that, uh, pause your video and read through those two paragraphs. Some of you may have a test bar, and a test bar would be a 10 inch piece of 1 inch stock that is hardened and ground and tested to be perfectly concentric and the dimension the same on both ends. This is just a piece of cold rolled steel and this is what we're going to use but this isn't nearly accurate enough. Now you could in fact, I've got center holes drilled in there already on both ends, you could in fact uh, put this between centers and turn the whole thing down and compare the measurements or a smaller uh, shorter bar but that would be impractical. We're going to do it more like the picture I just showed you in the book. Again, this is one inch stock and they are 11 inches in, long, in length and I just uh, measured it. This one has not been faced yet or center drilled so put this in the lathe, face both ends and center drill it as accurately as you can. This is soft mild steel. I believe it to be 1018. I know I tend to turn everything into a casting project, but I guess that's because I've got a, a home foundry. But it's come to my attention there's probably only a hundred men in the entire United States that have home foundries. So this can be done with blocks of steel or blocks of uh, aluminum that you, you have purchased. It doesn't matter what the material is. The softer the better. It just makes the whole job easier and faster when you do the tailstock alignment. But I made two patterns, and these are about three inches in diameter, and they're an inch and a half thick because this is a, well, it was a piece of a two by four is what it was. These, of course, are tapered and have foundry draft on them, and I, I went ahead uh, when we had some nice weather this winter, and I made the castings. Now, I haven't separated them yet. I just wanted to show you how I gated it, and the sprue where I poured the metal came down through here. And this is a riser which is to be thrown away. Actually, I'll remelt it. That controlled the uh, shrinkage. Otherwise, uh, if you don't use a big block riser like this, called a riser, uh, you'll end up with uh, rather <coughs> pronounced sinkholes in here where the metal shrinks. So as you can see, there is virtually no shrinkage there. So the next thing I'm going to do is to cut the gates off on the bandsaw and then I'm going to uh, drill and bore and I don't think I'm going to ream. I think I'll just uh, bore it to one inch so that it fits the bar. I'm over at the bandsaw and I sawed through and then I saw it again so it's fairly clean. Now the next thing I need to do is to take this to the uh, 6 inch belt sander and I'm going to uh, sand all the way around to try to square it up a little bit. Remember this is tapered. We got about a 3 degree taper on there. When we hold that in a lathe chalk it's liable to fly out of there. So I like to have a flat spot to do that. So I'm going to simply put that on the belt sander which is right next door here. This will be noisy and I'll go clear around in a manner like that. 
Remember the diameter doesn't matter very much on this. I'm starting with about three inches, but I, as long as it ends up at least two and three quarters, I'm happy. That way it can be used for many, many years before we wear it down to the nub. I've belt sanded it in a manner such as this with an 80 grit blue belt. That cleaned it up somewhat. I don't know if the light is allowing that. As long as I've got a, uh, uh, a part right here where you can see that it's been sanded that is perfectly perpendicular to the back, I'm okay. I don't have to, uh, to do it all the way because if the material's already getting hot, uh, friction causing heat, you know. That's what it looked like before. I didn't get the gate all the way removed, but I will straddle that when I put it in the three-jaw chuck. Let's step over, if you will, to the closing lathe. The work is in the chuck on the 12-inch uh, closing lathe. I want to face this off, but notice how we end up being a little bit behind the chuck jaws. I don't want to hit the chuck jaws, so the way I deal with that is to take a parallel. It's about a half inch thick. I'm going to lay it in there, push the work tightly against it, while you tighten the chuck. Now, we absolutely must remove that parallel. Do not leave it in there when you start the lathe or you'll be wearing it for a set of braces. But now the work is held in there parallel to the face of the chuck and I'm ready to take a facing cut. So I'll bring up the Aloris tool post using one of my favorite tools and I'm going to face it off clean. Just a matter of squaring it up. Get yourself an Aloris tool post if you don't have one. You will not be able to live without it. One more light cut and that's all I need. I'm not too worried about the surface finish. I think you also understand, uh, can understand now why I took the time to belt sand this so that uh, this particular part here that has the belt sanding marks on it is really the only part that is uh, in contact with the chuck jaws. Also be very careful when you have your chuck jaws extended like this. Not really even a very good practice but we're still within the range of the chuck but very easy to hit your knuckles or get a shirt uh, sleeve or something uh, tied in there. So roll up your sleeves and get your safety glasses on and practice all your safety rules at all times. Both sides of both castings have been faced. Now I've got one back into the three jaw chalk and it's pushed all the way up against the face now and I'm going to center drill it. Now I'm going to drill it quarter inch all the way through as my pilot drill and then half inch all the way through, three quarter, eight, three quarter inch all the way through and then clear up to seven eighths or if I have a fifteen sixteenths I'll use that all the way through and then it's ready to bore. I do not have a one inch reamer so I'm going to bore it. And now both of them have been drilled seven eighths faced on both sides and now I'm ready to start boring them out to one inch. I've got a three quarter inch boring bar with a carbide tip, a Dorian tool holder, a Loris tool post size B. The work is already seven eighths in diameter. I'm at 500 RPM. And away 
I go. The boring bar is marked, so you probably can't see it, so I know what the depth is. That's my size. I will use a micrometer and a telescoping gauge. Just enough to clean it up. That might be my last pass. There's a telescoping gauge. Remember I want, what did it say, 0 0.997. Well, I'm at... I use this kind of micrometer because it shows up in the video. Oh. And we're at 993, so I'm going to take one more pass. I tell you what, I do not want to have to press this in for several reasons. First of all, I don't have a press here at home big enough to do that. And secondly, I'd like to be able to adjust these two on the shaft exactly where I want them. And I prefer to have them slide on just uh, by hand and use Loctite. I know that sounds like uh, a chicken's way out or something, but uh, Loctite for this kind of application is going to be just fine because we're only taking light cuts in aluminum when we actually put this thing into use. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do for final size. I'm about a half thousandth or a one thousandth over that size. And here's my shaft. And she's going in. That's about as far as it's going in right now. I feel that I, and there's no slop at all, I feel that's going to be just right. So I'm going to take that one out. And I've already zeroed out the collar on the cross feed so that I'll take the uh, the other casting and that'll only take me about three minutes to bore that out and uh, then we are ready to put these in place I may if I have a little trouble getting it on far enough I will polish the shaft a little bit with emery cloth so that I can push it on and lock tight it alternate ways of doing that if you end up with a hole that's oversize would be to set screw it on or even pin it on as long as if you're using hardened pins that they are below the surface and will not interfere with the uh, cuts later on uh, when we use this as a test bar. So it isn't real critical just so that they're on there where you want them to be and they aren't going to move. You don't want to have to drive it in with a sledgehammer though. <laughs> 